another Monday night call that I'm really looking forward to. I've been, I've kind of really been enjoying them actually lately, lately. That didn't sound too good, but actually I like the way I've kind of been uh, really kind of showing you guys different ideas and different brands. I know some of you guys reached out to me also, um, just letting me know that uh, you guys kind of like that style and like that way of doing things. And look, I, I agree. I agree. I think it's going to be pretty, pretty cool. I want to also show you guys a couple of examples like I've been showing you on the last few Empower Hours in terms of some brands, some brand ideas and what people have been doing that uh, that is really, really cool and something that you can actually duplicate for yourself also. All right, so let's get into it. You guys know me. I like to go to get straight into it. One thing that I've been actually talking about a lot lately is the micro niching, right? So a lot of you guys know I'm a big fan of micro niching, which is basically picking a specific target market um, regardless. I, I like the very, very small niches. I think they do a lot better than going broader. But this particular brand here we came across and something that I've been mentioning a lot is you know picking something very, very specific. For example, these guys here have just purely focused on bulldogs, right? And I didn't even know that bulldogs actually needed wrinkle wipes, but apparently they do, right? And if you have a look, they're basically the whole brand is purely just focused on bulldog shampoos, wipes, uh, balms, right? And that is their actual niche. So it's very, very, it's very obvious in terms of exactly who the target market is, right? Anyone who actually owns a bulldog. And again, something that I've been mentioning a few times is don't go too broad when you're actually picking your niche or when you're picking your product, right? You can focus on something very, very specific. And when you actually do that, it becomes a lot easier to communicate with the actual customer, right? Now, it's probably a good idea if you own a bulldog before you do something like this, or if you're going to do something similar, that you actually own that particular uh, dog, let's say, for example. Uh, but it's a really, really cool idea. And uh, again, it's something that I had absolutely no idea about um, until we basically came across it and started noticing that, you know, there are these particular types of products that you can actually get, which is kind of very, very interesting. I'm sure Cavoodle's probably got something also. Um, I'm not a, I kind of stay out of the the, the food um, realm, unless it's uh, specific dog treats and things like that for actual dogs, but kind of things like that is a good idea. I know a French bulldog called Hugo. There you go, Virginia. So even with Frenchies, I mean, I'm not sure if Frenchies need uh, wrinkle cream, but if that hasn't been done with Frenchies, um, and that's something they need, then it could be a really good business to actually look at and kind of duplicate and think, okay, well, you know, maybe we can actually do that with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> chubby. They are very, very chubby, actually. That's a good brand name. Bully chubby. All right, so I'm just going to kind of show one more. Okay, so this is a really, really cool ad that I actually came across. It's an Ikea ad, believe it or not. And if you have a look, it says, don't worry, you can afford it. So basically what it's doing, it's showing that... <laughs> If your dog ruins their pillow, don't worry, you can afford it because it's only, you know, 15 Danish francs, I think it is. Um, so basically what they're saying is that, you know, they're basically being honest and they're saying your dog was going to tear it apart, um, but it's okay. You can actually just get another one because it's quite cheap. And I thought that was quite, quite nice and, and quite cool. Um, you see it there. Don't worry, you can afford it. And people actually like that. You know, people actually really, really like an honest ad. And last week, we actually looked at a particular product where that where it said something like, um, you know, it's the most expensive, this particular product, or we know you can afford it or something like that. And I think it's always a really, really good idea to come across like that. Um, if you're advertising, if you're going to be doing videos, something we've been talking about, if you're going to be doing images, just be as honest as you, uh, you can. You know, you've probably been seeing on Facebook also, there are some marketers that are saying, you know, I want your email. And people actually like that. Um, a lot. So I think it, it goes a long, long way. I guess one thing I've been speaking about a lot is, um, you know, for people to really start to look at members to really start to look at different things and getting into different things and, and experimenting with different things, because usually, you know, there is a process in terms of going into say skincare or superfoods and that particular process can easily kind of deter a lot of people from getting into it.